Hi everybody, this is Jesse Lemieux of Pacific Permaculture and today I've put together a video for you titled A Mother's Day Food Forest because that's exactly what it is. This past Mother's Day of 2013, I put together a food forest. I planted up a food forest for my mom as a Mother's Day present that keeps on giving and giving. And so we use this site right here that you see in the photo, this beautiful full Western exposure. This photo was taken on May 31st of 2013. This is out in the Fraser Valley in Langley. Up here at this corner is the south side, the south end. Um, off this way where we see this boat is the north end. Uh, we have a maple tree here, an old pear tree, a cherry stump that's actually still alive and throws shoots every now and then. And then we have some perennial flowers that come up, bluebells to be precise. We're going to take out the old pear tree because it's kind of beyond resuscitation. It doesn't produce very well, if at all. It's sporadic and it doesn't necessarily fit with our design, which is actually an espalier fruit orchard along the fence. So that's the site. Once again, as I said before, it's a beautiful full Western exposure and our design takes full advantage of that. In the design process, I worked up this base map, which is to scale, a one to 50 scale. Uh, site identified in Langley, BC. It's currently underutilized. We're gonna cut down that old pear tree, save some of the perennials, keep the maple because it provides a screen for that old boat. My parents don't like seeing that old boat in the summertime. We got the contour lines indicated and then another bed that's actually part of the whole system that couldn't be seen in the previous photo. This is the design I worked up. Uh, as I mentioned previously, it's an Espelier pear system. And there's an espalier current up in this uh, south end in the shade of this existing flowering shrub that we're going to keep in. Currents don't mind a little bit of shade. Below the espalier pear, we're planting up a herb layer that includes asparagus, strawberries, oregano, and chives. Out from the fence, from the pear tree, away from the pear tree, we've got a raspberry system we planted up, and then it has a perennial herb layer of sweet Sicily, good King Henry, French sorrel, horseradish, and watercress. Up in the shady area, we're going to try some shade herbs like wasabi and ginseng. Of course, we're not limited to those varieties, but it's a really good place to start. Um, we got a pretty good diversity here and everything that we've uh, listed. We're going to do an edible border of daylilies, so we're going to get some uh, variety in color there and also another edible yield. Down here, I've written this in as butterfly bush. That should actually read... Uh, or sorry, it reads butter bush, but it should read butterfly bush. Uh, butterfly bush is a local hummingbird tree. Its uh, genus name is Budlea. We're going to plant this area up as a butterfly hummingbird system. So there will be lots of uh, perennials in there that have uh, big red flowers that produce lots of nectar. This is the section view uh, showing the, the area we'll be planting, the wood chip pathway, uh, maybe we're going to inoculate with some edible mushrooms, the edible perennials, the spelia pear, the raspberries, the edible flowers, and then chives down along that retaining wall edge. This is what the site looked like on Mother's Day weekend, 2013, when I did all the planting. This is what it looked like when we started. As you can see, we got a thick covering of um, mostly, it's mostly buttercup. So the perennial herbs in there. Uh, my dad has been piling up some... Uh, organics, leaves, grass clippings, things like that to keep the water down. And there's the maple casting a big, uh, keep the weeds down, sorry, keep the weeds down with the mulch there. And there's the big maple casting a dark shadow on this last panel. So we're going to need to deal with that. By the time the weekend is, was over, this is what the site looked like. Not so pretty, but I guarantee you in three to four weeks time, it's going to be as green as green can be. And there'll be a, an abundance of annuals, mostly cover crop, but we'll definitely plant some squash in there. Uh, you can see here we pruned out the maple to open up the light for this pear tree here. So pear tree, pear tree, pear tree. The currants planted up here, raspberries, raspberries, raspberries here, raspberries there, and then there's our swales that were indicated in the design. So if you bear with me and sit back, relax, and en enjoy the information, I will now show you several video clips that I took during the day while this was going in. So I highlight the important points of the entire process right down to applying 
a biologically active compost tea extract. Hi everybody, today is Saturday, May 12th, 2013, and I'm out here in Langley, in the beautiful Fraser Valley, on an overcast day, but we've just had a really good run of weather here on the west coast. Um, stellar May weather, really quite stellar May weather. The last week and a half has been 20 plus degrees and beautiful blue sunshine. It's kind of nice to have a day of reprieve um, now that I'm out digging around in the garden. And so what I wanted to show you today, and I'll be bobbing in and out, so I'm going to kind of break it up. We'll have um, maybe three or four different videos today. But what I'm covering today is the installation of a food forest for my mom. And uh, yeah, so that's all I have to say for now. And I'll be back to you shortly. So here is the food forest space. This is a full west exposure wall. Right there you see an old pear tree and you see actually in the, in the background there up against the fence is one of the young pear trees that we're gonna be planting. We're actually gonna be planting three of those. Um, one where you see it there another one in behind the old pear tree, and another one right here. We're going to grow them up along the fence, espalier style. Over here, uh, in the shade of this ornamental flowering cherry tree, uh, on this panel right here, we're going to do an espalier current. Um, the site, uh, until about five minutes ago, was uh, completely covered in some perennial flowers. So you can see the blue ones down the corner there. There was a lot of those in the space, but mostly it was buttercup and other kinds of perennial herbaceous weeds. And uh, just so that I could get a sense of the lay of the land, what I've done is I've gone and I've cut all that material off and then I've piled it up in a couple stockpiles down here that I can apply uh, later as mulch. The other thing too is I'm going to start digging around here and I didn't want to incorporate that organic matter. I wanted to uh, pull that organic matter apart and, um, and, and reserve it and use it where I wanted to use it. Uh, one way that I like to think of permaculture is to uh, think of it as pulling something apart and putting it all back together again in a way that makes sense. And so the theme we're going to be working with here is a espalier orchard along the fence there and then out here along this space right here in a row coming straight this way we're actually going to do an orchard of raspberries and then you can see right there I've already got the beginnings of a little swale pathway so each tree is going to be planted with a swale pathway and then down in the distance there I'm going to have another swale that runs along like that and then we're going to have a wood chip path that comes all the way up the center it's going to jog around that old cherry stump I'm just going to leave that in the ground the fungus can take care of that and it can add some organic matter and then it's going to roll around and up into here in this really shady spot we're going to give uh, some wasabi some ginseng and maybe a shiitake log or two a try so we've got some interesting microclimate here out along this retaining wall edge here beside the uh, the parking lot we're going to do a row of edible flowers probably mostly day lilies day lilies and, and maybe some tulips and daffodils though those two aren't edible um, that'll be a nice uh, border edge and then actually down along this edge here on the outside we're also going to try some more robust perennial herbs and um, yeah so today basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be planting all the trees we're going to get some raspberry bushes we're going to plant those up uh, we're going to mulch it up with wood chips we're going to get those swales dug and then we're going to do a heavy cover crop of buckwheat and field pea and vetch to hold the space for us through the summer and by the fall everything should be nice and uh, prepped for us and we'll come in and we'll do a big blitz of perennial herbs. So yeah, I look forward to checking back in with you in a few moments, uh, maybe an hour or so, that's more than a few moments I guess, but in an hour or so we'll uh, have these swales dug or we'll at least have it marked out and uh, I can show you where we go from there. Thanks. Okay, so here we are. I've got the site all flagged out. And I always like to flag all my pathways out before I get going. And then as I'm working on the site, uh, I only stick to where my pathways are. 
So here, these two markers here, the two pink ones in between is the pathway. So I always make sure that I'm only stepping. And there's the pathway down the middle there. And I only ever now when I'm working on the site, I step there. And I find that this has two benefits. One is, is that uh, in the soil that we're trying to aerate and build structure for the plants, like this pear tree that we're planting here, we don't um, accidentally compact that soil up and cause damage. And the other thing too is, is that if I can find myself as I'm working around the site to the pathways, I find that I actually will discover if there's any gaps in my design in terms of accessibility. So this is really um, getting down to the uh, schematic level or, or beyond the schematic level of design. This is actually the patch design. So there's a, there's a swale pathway right there. And then right here is one that I've marked along. And so by confining myself to the pathways that I have designed in and want to work with, there's another pathway out right along here. Uh, I see if there's anywhere that I could maybe improve the accessibility. And so if I'm finding that I'm like trying to like I'm being moved to jump over beds or step over beds, it might mean that be another spot that I could put a pathway and uh, rejig the design a little bit. So there's two reasons why we want to mark out our pathways first. Two important reasons, there's several, but Two important reasons, we want to mark out our pathway first before we do any digging, and then we want to confine all our activities to the pathways uh, to protect the soil from our compaction, and two, to uh, basically do a dry run before we've put all the plants in and it's too late. So those are two really good reasons to mark out the pathways. So I've dug the swales and the pathways now, the site, and all of these pathways are passive water harvesting. There's the bottom of the swale there. There's the mound. This is where the raspberries are going to be planted, right here. And it goes downhill to the next swale right there. And the shovel's laying in it, which comes across to there. And then back there, and there's the other one here. So we got one, two, three, and there's the fourth one right there. So raspberries, 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 raspberries. And then we've taken that branch there of that maple. So we got a nice bright sunny spot along the fence here for the pear tree and the pear tree. And the pear tree to go right here and the pear tree to go right there. It's the end of the day, and uh, I've taken a leisurely pace through all of this. But we've got our swales dug, so there's one swale here, and there's a couple up back behind me. We've got our pears that are set up here for espalier. Um, at the base of each pear, I'm going to plant a blackberry, and I'm going to grow a thornless blackberry. I'm going to grow that up along the fence trellis as well. And the spaces here, and this space here, and the space behind me, and the other one between the swales, I've got different raspberry varieties that I'm going to plant as well. Ultimately, we're going to have a perennial understory of edible, medicinal, and culinary herbs. Uh, we'll have some fertility herbs out on the side border there. I've taken all of the branches and leaves that came off this maple that's up above us that we had to trim to let light in for our pear. And I've chopped that all up with the mattock and the, the machete. And I've piled that in along the edge there as a weed control underneath some of these coffee sacks. I have applied on the soil um, kelp meal and rock phosphate, colloidal rock phosphate. And now what I'm going to do before I actually plant is I'm going to I'm going to throw a mix of uh, what I have here is uh, radish. They're they're called uh, uh, icicle short top radishes. I'm going to use some small fava beans. I'm going to use some winter field pea and a little bit of buckwheat. And then in little pockets, I'm going to plant a few nasturtiums. I've got some cosmos here and then I think that's it some some flowers to give it some nice color and what I like to do before I go and I start planting my raspberries 
is I take the seeds and I, I spread them, a generous spreading of each type of seed onto the soil. Just a little bit of each. The radishes, so I'm gonna get a little bit of a vegetable yield off of this, but mostly what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm trying to replicate the annual weed pattern. I'm also gonna plant some, uh, some spaghetti squash in here as well, uh, in mounds. So this is really gonna take off as an annual vegetable system, and that's how we get a good yield out of the first year of a food forest or an orchard establishment. So I've got my foot down, I'm gonna throw the winter field pea down here. So I'm gonna seed up the winter field pea. And the reason why I do this first is because by the time I'm done planting all of my berry layer, all of those seeds will have been incorporated because I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna disturb the soil. So they're gonna get incorporated on their own. So I don't have to worry about going back and raking behind. It's just a little tip that I've worked out, a little, a little trick that I've worked out over the last few years of installing these things is that if I lay the seeds down first, before I plant my larger perennials, the seeds just get incorporated and I don't have to worry about it. And I get them under the soil and then I, I make sure that I get germination. So that's all I do is I, I'm, on all of my bare soil patches, I'm gonna spread all of that. Here in this area where I still have burlap, I'm gonna plant alfalfa mulch. In the future, we're gonna plant an asparagus bed in between the trees here. So we're gonna have a really interesting uh, guild. It's not a full on uh, low intensity food forest guild, but it's, uh, it's a guild nonetheless. We're gonna have blackberries climbing up the pear trees, all on a spellier with asparagus and maybe some strawberries. We might try some asparagus and strawberries together and see how that goes. So right in this little space here, we are going to be planting uh, four, four different edible varieties. Um, I'm using all the different layers and then time stacking as well because the asparagus is going to come up faster and then the strawberries and then the blackberries of course. So that's, um, that's the phase I'm in now and after I get all of this planted I've got some, some compost tea extract. It's not an actual brew, it's an extract that I picked up from a local fellow. He uh, came and delivered it today. So I'm really really excited because we've, we've given the soil a really good feeding of kelp and rock phosphorus, really small particle rock phosphate and so we put that we put that soil food down there and now we're gonna bring in the uh, party in a bucket so I'll come back to you after I get all this planted up with that seeding regime I just talked about and I'll show you um, what we do with that application I may get to it tonight I might do it tomorrow good morning it's the day after the install we did with the food forest you can see we got our raspberries here and our thornless blackberry that we planted here at the base of the the pear tree. We're going to grow the two of them up as a combo espelied uh, pear blackberry system. And then we're going to plant asparagus and strawberries um, through this zone here. So we're going to have four different varieties of edibles in this zone. So I covered that a little bit yesterday. And then um, you'll remember from what I talked about yesterday where we put the cover crop, the leguminous cover crop, some buckwheat cover crop in here as well. And we also applied so a lot of kelp meal and some colloidal rock phosphate. And so what we've done is we've set the table. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna invite the dinner guests. And that's what I have right here. This is a, uh, an active compost extract. It's not an actual brew tea. This is an extract. And the benefits of the extract are that it doesn't skew the tea towards just aerobic microbes. It's actually, you get a full complement of microbes in here. The other thing that's really great about this is that I can store it in this bucket with the lid on for two weeks. And before I apply it, I put an activator in, which is mostly just uh, a rock dust, so a mineral complement of food. And that activates the microbes that are in here, and then we have eight hours to apply it. So I just put that in, and all we're gonna do is we're just going to drench it and I'm going to focus on the plants. So these are the dinner guests that I'm inviting to the party. I've set the table. And the other great thing that happened while we were sleeping is that the rain came. And um, I don't know about you, but I always noticed that it doesn't matter how much irrigation you can give young seeds and young plants, um, they'll do well, but they really don't seem to ever take off until a little bit of rain happens. 
And so we've got there's a pretty good soakage last night, so we're really we're really really excited about what's um, happened here and what's going to happen here. We planted all these plants yesterday. We put the food down. The rain came, and now we are making sure that um, as it is above, it is below by bringing this diverse um, non-activated compost extract as opposed to an activated compost tea. And we're applying that now with the food there and uh, uh, we're just gonna set it and forget it, so to speak. The, one of the most important rules of permaculture is knowing um, when not to do th something as much as it is important to know when to do something. And that's really what this is about, is now we put everything in place, it's up to the, un the, the unknowns, the, the imponderables, the bacteria and biology to structure this soil and get this system going for us.